This world is boring. What if I could just snap my fingers and create something more pleasing? That's much better. Welcome back everyone. I hope you're doing well. Today, I got a shorter update for you. We have been working on UI and the graphics part of the game for a few episodes now. Let's end it with some cool background images and even backgrounds that move in different speeds. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video, and also, if you wish to support the channel, there's a link in the description below. And as always, the code and all the assets can be found on GitHub or on my website. Now, a quick recap and then we're off. It's not that much to cover from the last episode. We made our level bigger, well, at least in width. We didn't increase it in height because we want to keep it simple. Then with a few variables and some math, we managed to move the level as soon as the player was close to either the left or the right border. And a quick check at the end of this made sure that our level offset never went too far. We also added a few fixes that was needed. A cool looking background for our menu, for example. But now, let's continue with this type of work, with some cool background and some clouds to our playing scene. Alright, so let us begin with the background for the playing scene. And that one will be very easy. All we need is the image and then just import it and draw it. So first we're gonna need the image and here it is. It's just a simple background image with water and this will be the horizon. So we're just gonna drag and drop it inside our res folder. And there it is playing underscore background underscore image. So to our load and save, let's copy one of these and uh, we can name it playing background image and the string needs to change as well and it will be playing underline bg underline image like so and now in our playing all we need is a private buffered image uh, background image something like that and then we need to import buffered image and background image we can call load save dot get sprite atlas load save dot playing background image so now we have the background image and with this background image we want to draw it of course so let's just draw it before everything else so g dot draw image and we're gonna go with this one so we can set our width and height. Background image, start x is zero, start y is zero, game dot game width and game dot game height for our width and height for our image. So it's gonna cover the entire background. And now let's give it a try and see how it looks. And it's looking pretty good. And with a few clouds here, it's gonna tie it all together. So let's begin with the bigger clouds first. And just like our background, we need some images for our clouds. So this will be our big clouds. And as you can see, they are cut on the left side and on the right side. And that's because they are meant to be connected. So let's drag it inside our rest folder. Big clouds right there. And you guessed it, we need to create a string here. And we can call it big cloud big clouds and for the string it's big clouds and with our clouds both the big and the smaller ones we need to scale them together with our game scale so why not just make it easy for ourselves and create a few constants inside our constant class so we don't really have any inner class for it so let's just create one public static class and we're gonna call this environment so environment some brackets and first one will be the bigger one so public static final int big cloud with default is equal to 448 and for the height we can just copy this one with default but height default which is going to be 
101 and then we need the actual size of it so can just remove that one and it's going to be recast over to int and it will be default width times game.scale and let's do the same for our height cloud height big cloud width default so now we have the width and the height that we can use and we're gonna add for the smaller clouds later but let's begin with our bigger cloud and just like our background image we're gonna need a image to store it so big cloud and we're gonna load it here as well big cloud equals load save dot get sprite atlas load save dot big clouds so now we have the big clouds loaded and inside our draw method we create a draw clouds and we're gonna draw both our bigger and our smaller in here so let's just create this method for it let's begin by just draw one and see how it is so g dot draw image big cloud we are going to start at zero for x and for y we're actually going to recast this because it needs to be scaled with our y and that's because it's going to start at 204 times game dot scale and for our width we are going to need to import the constant value so import static utils constants dot environment and let's grab them all we're going to need them anyways so for our width it's going to be big cloud width and for height it's going to be big cloud height null and that's good enough so let's start it up and see how it looks all right so it's in a perfect height now we just need to add more in a row here so it looks perfect and we're going to do that by adding just a simple for loop here so int i is equal to zero i is less than let's begin with three i plus plus all right but they are all in the same place but we add plus i times the width and if we run it now they should all be looking a lot better so now we have one two and actually three so yeah it's looking pretty good right now and at the end we're gonna add so when the player is running to the side the clouds are not just standing still they're actually moving a bit with the player but that is something we're gonna add at the end now let's add smaller clouds as well and guess what we're going to need yet another image and it's going to be this image of a cloud so let's go ahead and drag it into our rest folder okay to our load and save again copy one of those lines and it's not going to be big clouds it's going to be small clouds and the name of the file is actually small instead of big so small clouds save that into our constant class actually and add the constant values for our smaller cloud as well because we're going to need the same type of constant values here let's just go ahead and copy those and instead of big cloud we say small cloud and small cloud and the size of our small cloud is of course different and it's going to be 74 times 24 so small cloud with default small cloud height default yep that looks all right now we can copy these as well and it's small cloud small cloud with default height default all right i think that looks all right so we can actually close down this one and we can close down load and save as well 
And in our playing scene, let's add a small cloud as well. Right there, and we're gonna import that image. Small cloud equals load save dot get sprite atlas load save dot small clouds like so. And let's go ahead and just draw one of these clouds and see how it looks. So a g dot draw image. I'm gonna go with this one. Small cloud x, let's go with 300. For y, let's go 5, 600 or something. And then for width, we will need small cloud width and small cloud height. And then of course, like so. And let's see what we get. All right, so we have our cloud in here, but it's very low. Maybe we want them up here, but not in the exact same place all the time. A little bit randomness to it. So yeah, let's go ahead and fix that. And we could add a class with this, a small cloud class, and then give it an X, Y and everything. But we just need a random Y position. That's it. So underneath here, I'm going to create a private int array. And we're going to call it small clouds pos or something like that and this array will contain different y values for our small clouds and it's going to be a new int array and the size let's say let's say eight uh, plenty enough i think but how are we going to get random values well we need to use something called private random r and d equals new random and this random class is simply going to give us some random values. And to do that, we add a for loop underneath our small clouds position array. Int i equals zero, i is less than, is less than small clouds position dot length i plus plus. And then small clouds position, the index position i is equal to rnd dot next int. And we want it to start at, first we need to recast it because we need to use game.scale here, but it will be 70 times game.scale. So the smallest we can get is 70 times scale and scale is two here. So 140 is the lowest that we can get. And here we specify plus the range. We're gonna go with a range of 150 times game.scale. So once again, int 150 times game.scale. So we're starting with 70 and we get a random value between 0 and 150 added on top of that. So 140 plus something between 0 and 300. And now in our draw method, we add another for loop here as well. Int i is equal to zero, i is less than small cloud position dot length i plus plus. And for position x here, uh, oh, we don't actually need a zero plus i up there. We just need i times. And just like that, we can go with small cloud width times four times i so for every for every index we're gonna add four clouds in width between each one and for y we need to use this array so small clouds position then there and i i think is going to be sufficient so yeah so let's give it a try and see how it looks, shall we? All right, so we have the first one up here, the second one there, and they are looking a little bit high. So maybe we can take a look and see if we can change that. And I think we're gonna increase the starting position for Y to say 90 and decrease the range from 150 to 100. 100. Let's see how that looks. 
Starting it up again. All right, so we have one over here, one over there, one behind there. And I think that looks much better. So there is some randomness to this. Now we need to add some movement to it. All right, so how are we gonna make sure that the clouds move at different speeds, giving us the illusion that there is some depth going on in our game? Well, we have one variable, so we don't have to add anything. It's actually pretty simple. All we need to do is to use the X level offset. And we're just gonna add that inside our draw functions for the big cloud and the small cloud. So for the X position here to our big cloud, we're going to add minus, and we're gonna recast this, int and X level offset times 0 0.3. And for our small clouds, we do the same. We can actually copy this minus here for our x minus that, but the smaller clouds gonna move faster. So 0.7. Now let's see how that looks. All right, let's jump here, jump here. And all right, so the bigger clouds is moving very slow, but the smaller ones are moving faster. And when I run back, gives an illusion of depth in our background, which is very nice. It's very simple to add and it makes the game come to life, or rather the background to come to life, which is really nice. All right, that was a shorter video. I feel that we're done with the focus on UI and backgrounds for a while. Next one, I am not quite sure what it will be about. I have to come up with something. Until then, my friends, take care now and don't forget to subscribe. You don't want to miss the next video as well. I wish you all a great day. Bye.